All right, so now we're going to take a look at how to create another version of the carping material, which is going to be a bit different from what we did in the previous video. So for this one, we're again going to start off with the same exact uh, logic behind it, and that is by basically defining how the the color for the carping material is made. So we basically have the, the bare metal. We have a primer, a base coat, and a clear coat. So knowing this from what we saw in the previous video, we're going to try and create another type of a carping material. So for this, I'm going to start out the IPR. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is select my model here. And since we have this uh, V-Ray material applied to it, what we want to do is every time we're trying to create a layered system or a layered material, we need to use a V-Ray blend material. So what we're going to do from here is just take a V-Ray and choose a V-Ray blend material. All right, we're going to keep this thing as a base. And now we're going to apply this to the selection. There we go. So nothing changed because, well, we haven't added anything. So at the moment, it's only showing us our basic uh, V-Ray material. So for the first coat, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to use something similar like we did in the first video, but instead of uh, using the V-Ray carpet material, we're just going to use one portion of it. Namely, once we go into the V-Ray or materials in V-Ray, here we can only choose the V-Ray flakes material. So here we go, this thing. And as you can note, notice, we have pretty much the same options as we had in the basic uh, V-Ray carpet material. So what I'm gonna do is take this thing and put it into the first coat. Now, as soon as we do this, we're gonna notice that we have that same look that we had in the previous video. So what we need to do here is first check if we're gonna use a triplanar or we're gonna use a uh, explicit UVW uh, channel. If you, again, if you have a proper UV, you can use that. It will give you a different look. In this case, my model is uh, UV unwrapped, so we can use this thing, but for just Let's say that you don't have a UV on your uh, on your uh, material. We're gonna go with triplanar. So here we're just gonna change the triplanar scale because at the moment it's at one centimeter. So if I go to one a uh, zero point one, they should make the flakes a bit smaller. There we go. Looks uh, relatively okay. And let's just quickly scroll through all of these because as uh, I said, we've actually done this in the previous video. So we can change uh, some of the orientation. Uh, for example, at the moment, only 5% of these are facing directly at the camera. If I go to increase it at around two, we should see more of these flakes uh, flare up. There we go, like this. Flake glossiness will uh, control how uh, glossy these are. Again, if you wanna uh, see more about this, check out the previous video. So I'm gonna go with 0 0.8 and this should be enough for the flakes. Now, if I want to see how only the flakes look like on my uh, model, what I can do is just click over here, select isolate it, and this will show me only how the flakes are affecting this entire model. From here, if I turn this thing off, let's take a, just a smaller piece so we can actually see how this thing is working a bit faster. I can change the density or the size of the flakes. So if I go to 0 0.1, I should make the flakes smaller. Okay, looks much better and in tune with uh, what I'm expecting to see with a model like this. There we go. So we have the flakes scattered all around, but not very, very visible. So if we want to have this thing more visible, what we would have to do is we're gonna have to change the base material. In this case, what that would require is to go over to the V-Ray material and from here change the diffuse color. So do anything that we want. Let's just go over with a uh, simple black color like this. Maybe put it to one. There we go. Now I can see that in this black color, I have a lot of these flakes. And those flakes 
uh, the color is driven by the uh, flake color so I can choose whatever color I want and I can have uh, that thing uh, show in my end result. Now if we follow the same logic from the starting image, basically this thing, so what we have at the moment is we have the primer which is our V-Ray material, we have the base coat which in this case is our V-Ray flakes material and the last thing we would require is the clear coat material. Now uh, the way that we can add the clear coat material is very simple, namely if we go over in the V-Ray material under the coat parameters if we just go and increase the coat amount to one just like that we got our final layer that can make our material look realistic and now if we zoom in especially if i put this thing a bit bigger if we zoom in let's go with the real zoom so we can see it better zoom in we can see all of these small flakes in here now Let's go ahead and just take a look at an actual car paint material zoomed in and we can see that all of these different flakes, even though they're on the same color, they have a bit of a different hue to it. Now there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Uh, the first way would be to stay within uh, the material that we are using. So wh what we can do for that is we can go over in the V-Ray flakes material and where we have the flake color what we can do in for this is we can choose a V-Ray bitmap and then just choose a bitmap to drive the color for this so I'm going to click over here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a uh, just a regular leaf texture that I have lying around not the type of uh, texture you would think when it comes to like putting flakes but as you can see, since we have a different uh, hue on the entire image, the end result is very interesting because now we don't have any of these flakes basically having the same color because they all have a variant of hues. Because if we take a look at this image, you can see that we have a difference in greens, yellows, reds, oranges, so all around a interesting look by just changing that one uh, image and depending on what is the kind of look that we're going for we can use this uh, simple faking approach and get a very similar uh, outlook to this thing. Now the only thing that I can add in over on this uh, shader to improve it would be to go over in the actual V-Ray material and increase the reflection because at the moment we, uh, all the reflection is being driven by the coat. So if I remove the coat, you see that this is not a reflective material. So if I put an actual reflection to it, again, it's going to look a bit different, but let's go ahead and just reduce the glossiness on this thing to 0.6. So now we have a nice base uh, material for the carpain material, which is going to give the flakes a bit more of a pop. And now when we reintroduce the coat material, that's going to give it the shine. So this way, by just reintroducing that glossiness, it's giving it more of a, a actual look. As you can see over here, in the underlying material, you have that bit of a haze, especially around the hi uh, highlights of the reflections. So by using it in this manner, you have a realistic look for your uh, very carpet material. Now, there is another way we can do all of this. So what we did at the moment was we are having uh, all of these uh, flakes with a different color, but we are faking it by using an actual texture. Now, luckily for us, there is another way we can do a similar result to this one, and that is by going over to the materials, go to V-Ray, and choose V-Ray Stochastic Flakes Material. Now, this uh, material is a bit different, and what we're going to do is we're going to select my model, restart my IPR, and I'm going to apply this uh, thing to the selection, so we can see how it looks. So right away, we can see that uh, it looks like a chrome ball. Now, 
a uh, word of advice about this material is that even though you can choose to change the mapping type like we did in the V-Ray Flakes, if we go over to triplanar materials, what you can see is right away, we can't see anything. The reason for this is, well, it doesn't actually uh, work with triplanar. So if you choose uh, to use triplanar or you don't have UVs, it will not work properly. So you actually need to have a proper UV done to your model in order for this thing to work. Now, just so we can see how this thing works is we're gonna have to do a bit of changes. Namely, uh, the first thing that we have over here is we uh, enable or disable the flakes. If we disable it, we just uh, remove all of the flakes from the model. And as you can see now, we, we basically get a 100% uh, reflective material that looks a hell of a lot like chrome. So this is not what we want, but we want to in, uh, enable the flakes. And as soon as we do that, we can see that now we have a lot of these flakes uh, in our material. So what I'm going to do is the first thing that I can control is control the number of flakes. And as you can see, if you scroll over, it tells you that this is the square root of the number of flakes. So if we have uh, the general uh, 3000, the square root for this would be about 9 million of these. So if we go ahead and reduce this to something a lot smaller, let's try something like 50. Okay, now we can actually see how these flakes look like or where they are on the model. Now, another thing we can do here is let's just choose one smaller like this, and we can change the flake scale. For the moment, it's at uh, one. If we go over and put this thing to let's say 10, these flakes are gonna be bigger. And since they're bigger, again, their number is going to be over here. So we can see a lot more of them. And if I go and reduce this thing again to like 10, we can see that we have these uh, flakes scattered all around. Now, if we're trying to recreate something like we saw previously, like over here, we would need to have more of these uh, flakes. So the number, the actual number of these, we will have to uh, go over and finesse. So if we, in, uh, we, if we re reduce the scale of these, so we want to make them smaller, let's try with two we would have to go ahead and increase the actual number of flakes. So if I go down to 100. We now have more of these even though they're smaller. But at the moment, the issue that we are having is that these all appear to be white or appear to be reflective, uh, reflecting something. So what we want to do here is we can change the reflection filter from the color and give it a... Uh, reflective color that's different from white or we can do the same thing that we did previously and choose a reflection map but that would be again just doing the same thing we did previously and faking it but this is where the good thing comes from uh, this uh, stochastic v-ray uh, material namely we have this colored flakes parameters so if we choose this uh, by default it's set to off if we put it on to random hue this is going to randomize all of these materials or all of these flakes so they're going to have a different color. Now, this is going to start to look a lot like glitter. And uh, you can choose this uh, thing for either a carpet material or maybe some other material that you want to add glitter to it. Now, for the glitter... Uh, this thing basically uh, has two things that you can change. You can change the saturation of, or the strength of the color. So if we go to zero, they will basically lose all of their color. If you put them to uh, 0 0.5, they will have the color. It's not going to be so vibrant. And at one, basically everything is going to be uh, as vibrant as it can. So in this case, I might actually want to go over to 0 0.5 and have some change in the hue. Now that's gonna be very similar to what I'm seeing over here. And what I'm gonna do now is also, uh, I'm going to apply this thing or this stochastic material over to our regular blend material. Let's reapply this thing to the selection. And in this case, I'm actually gonna clear our previous one. There we go, so we don't have those flakes from 
the original. There we go. And now we're going to plug this thing into the first coat. And all of a sudden, I can see all of these flakes start to appear into my material. Now, the thing here is that uh, generally when you do this, it tends to push the entire shader a bit more to the white. So if you can, if you want to average that thing out, you can click on here, but take into account that if you do this, it will push the diffuse color to white as well. So by just clicking it like this, if this was any other color, it would have brightened it uh, up. But in this case, it actually looks okay. Now these flakes do tend to be a bit more on the bright side. So I might want to reduce this thing to 0.2 maybe. And there we go. So this is one way to control all of these flakes as to how they look like. And uh, if I change the glossiness here, I can make them uh, more visible or more glossy. And if I want to have more of these, again, we can just change how many of these there are or reduce the well, let's actually try a thousand. There we go. Well, a thousand seems to be a bit of an overkill. But there we go. You get the idea. So it's all about finding that sweet spot between the size of the flakes and the number. The lower the flake size, the higher the number and vice versa. Until you get that uh, happy medium to have your material look like what you're trying to uh, recreate. Because at the moment, I think that with these numbers, well, they are a bit uh, low, so we would have to increase them, but you get the idea. All right, so if you watch the first video and you watch this video, now you should have a solid understanding as to how to deal with creating a realistic carpeting material by using V-Ray 5.1.